Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about rabbit farming. So to start us off, let's discuss the topics that we are going to cover. First and foremost, we are going to discuss the common breeds that are available that you can use in rabbit farming. Then we'll discuss about housing, how to construct the perfect rabbit house. Then we'll discuss about sanitation, which is one of the most important things that you need to consider when you are practicing rabbit farming. So we'll talk about cleanliness, how to make sure that the rabbit house is clean to avoid diseases. Thereafter, we'll talk about temperature regulation in the rabbit house. Then we will talk about how to handle a rabbit. Thereafter, we will discuss about identification of rabbits. How do you identify your rabbits? So this is basically about using things like ear notches and ear tattoos to enable you to identify different rabbits so that you can track their progress. The same way human beings have names, you need to be able to identify the different rabbits that you have. Thereafter, we'll talk about feeding and nutrients. So which foods can you feed your rabbits and which nutrients do they require? Like all other animals, they require carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and mineral salts in addition to water. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about health of your rabbits. Here we'll discuss about diseases that affect your rabbits parasites that may affect your rabbits and so forth. Then we'll talk about breeding the rabbits. Here we'll talk about the right time to introduce your female rabbit to a male one. How to spot the heat signs and things like that. Then lastly we'll talk about understanding the business side of rabbit farming. So let's dive right into it. First and foremost, let's discuss about the rabbit breeds. So these are the most common types of breeds of rabbits that are reared. First and foremost, the breeds can be categorized into two. The first ones are rabbits that are reared for meat. But we have also rabbits that are reared for their fur. So here are the list of rabbits that are reared for meat. The first one is Californian, where the back, the female rabbits, weighs around 3.5 to 4.4 kgs, while the doe, the male one, weighs around 3.8 to 4.7 kgs. Okay, so Californians have a white body, pink eyes, as well as colored tails, nose, ears, and feet. Okay, the color should be as black as possible. The color of the nose, tail, ears, and feet should be black. Okay, then the eyes should be pink. So that's the Californian. Then next we have the New Zealand, which in most cases is the most common. In most areas around the world, it is the most common. So the New Zealand is very popular. They have deep white bodies with smooth flesh covering. They are a multi-purpose breed that can be raised for meat. You can raise them for show. You can raise them for pelts or even for laboratory purposes. Most of them are white in color. Then we have another breed known as the satin, where the back the female one weighs about 3.8 to 4.7 kgs, while the door, the male one weighs 4.4 to 5 kgs. Okay? So most of them are black in color. Then after that, we have another breed known as the French Loop. This is the largest where the back weighs over 4.5 kgs while the dough weighs over 5 kgs. So the French loop is normally the largest one. 
then we have another one known as the French loop okay here the back weighs about 4 kgs and over while the door weighs over 4.5 kgs okay and it is believed to be the old one of the oldest known breed it is easily recognized since it has extremely very large ears so those the ones we've discussed are rabbits reared for meat okay now let's discuss about a few of the rabbits that are reared for for their fur the first one is known as the florida white okay it, where the back and the door are about 1.8 to 2.7 kgs so it is smaller than the meat breeds okay but they have white they are very they have white fur with pink eyes so in most cases they are reared for for their fur then we have others that are known as such as the french angola the jossy woolly the giant angora the satin angora the american fuzzy loop and so forth so all of these breeds are reared for for their fur now let's discuss about housing of your rabbits so it's important to remember under rabbit housing is that rabbits are very very flexible when it comes to housing they can be housed in anything ranging from cages to hatches to buildings okay so it's not necessary to to invest in a, a large expensive house however all the rabbit houses should have the following they should have the right amount of space to house your rabbits we are going to discuss about that a bit later they should be easy to maintain and clean but most especially to clean ensure that you have a rabbits where ideally the the urine does not go on the floor it goes through the floor into outside or into another another area so that the floor is easier to clean then provide a place a house that is safe for your rabbits to live and breed okay so ensure that you take measures to ensure that predators don't enter into the rabbit house then also ensure that the rabbit house is economical because at the end of the day you are doing a business you don't want to invest in a very expensive house that you will take longer to get your profits back okay then you should also ensure that your house has enough ventilation cages are one of the most important parts of rabbit housing okay you can build your own cages or you can buy them then the cage size will depend on the size of the rabbit that you intend to to you intend to keep okay however there are standard sizes in the market that you can use as a benchmark if you want to create your own then in regards to flooring and bedding of the rabbit house materials used for the floor should should be ones that allow urine and feces to go through because otherwise your rabbits will have bad food health their feet will get diseases and they'll eventually lead to the rabbits dying okay so preferably use wire mesh or perforated flooring to ensure that your the rabbit floor is always clean then the types of rabbit houses include the following we have the smart small outdoor hatch this is a small wooden hatch built about 60 centimeters off the ground it's constructed using wood and has a hinged roof that can be tilted back okay the front and the floor is made of wire mesh okay so this is one of the houses that you can use for your rabbits then another one is known as we have 
also known as outdoor hatches that can be be built for your for your rabbits okay this is a group of outdoor hatches with a single roof and a large overhang to shelter the cages okay then if you are doing the outside hatches you can it's also possible to construct one hatch above the other so that you maximize on space then you can also use indoor wire cage okay such as the ones that you can see here to to house your rabbits then materials that you can use for building your rabbit houses include wood wire mesh wood and wire mesh okay so in addition to 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 building the rabbit house you'll also need to provide the following equipment you will need to provide a nest box which is normally used by the door when it is about it's used by the just a minute the next the nest box it's one that is used for breeding once the female rabbit gets pregnant and it's about to give birth it needs the nest box so you can use you can construct or buy a nest box such as the one that you you see here okay then you'll also need to provide a feed dish where you put the feeds alternatively you can hang the feeds on the walls then using you you'll install a rope on the wall then for example if you have feeds that that for example like vegetables you can hang them on the on the walls then your rabbits will consume them then in addition to that you'll also need to provide water systems rabbits need to have water 24 7 then ensure that you provide water systems that ensure that water is not sprinkling on to the, to the floor so that the floor is always clean now that we are done talking about rabbit houses let's now focus on sanitation in a rabbit house let's turn our focus to sanitation in a rabbit house so sanitation is very important because rabbits are very susceptible to health problems caused as a result of poor sanitation so you need to ensure a high level of cleanliness by doing the following ensure that you clean the feed the feed feeding and watering equipment daily clean the cages or the hatches once a week then the cages should be brushed with a wire brush or a disinfectant at least once a week okay then every once in a while use a mixture of vinegar and water to clean the floor and in so doing you remove the calcium carbonate deposits which pile up on the floor okay then if possible as i mentioned before use a floor that has wire mesh use wire mesh to make the floor because it's the best because it allows the urine and the feces to go through okay then you can that is all about sanitation then you are collecting the manure and urine as you practice the sanitation so you can use the manure for the following you can use it for biogas then you can also use it for raising worms which can then turn the manure into fertilizer which is which is good for for your farm then you can compost it okay add the manure to a compost pile and turn it in and in so doing you enrich the compost then you can also use it to fertilize your farm directly because unlike other unlike other manure rabbit manure does not burn the the plants okay now let's talk about ventilation and temperature regulation in in a poultry house one of the most important features sorry in raising healthy rabbits is ensuring that there is proper ventilation 
this is necessary first and foremost to provide fresh air to reduce humidity and to kill airborne disease causing, causing microorganisms that may be there in the in the rabbit house okay so you you first and foremost you may rear the rabbits in an enclosed buildings which then allows you to control the temperature and the humidity okay you should know that rabbits can withstand cold weather better than they can withstand hold hot weather they may die if they are exposed to extremely hot temperature the temperature inside the hatch of the cage should not be more than 25 degrees celsius okay so in case they are extremely hot temperatures more than 25 degrees celsius you may introduce a fan to 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 regulate the temperature okay because if the temperatures are over 25 degrees celsius the rabbits will suffer from what is known as heat stress okay then you can see signs in your rabbit such as the ears will will become will be raised and so forth they'll open their mouth and start breathing and so forth okay so basically heat stroke occurs when the rabbits cannot cool itself okay temperatures more than 35 degrees celsius will produce the heat stroke okay but in some cases even at normal room temperature rabbits that are obese may come up may also suffer from from the heat stress okay so take measures to prevent that okay so now let's talk about handling of a rabbit so under handling a rabbit you should know that it is scientifically proven that carrying a rabbit with the ears is not the best method okay so the best method of carrying a rabbit is first and foremost grasp the ears okay but do not carry it okay then you just grasp the ears to allow you to 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 keep hold of the rabbit then you will carry the rabbits by carry the body and place it under under your hand okay so that's the best method of handling the rabbit avoid carrying it using the ears okay so now let's talk about identification of rabbits so the best way to identify a rabbit is to tattoo it on the on the ear using a number or a letter that will then allow you to identify the rabbit for example the first rabbit you get is letter 1 so you tattoo one on the ear then the second one is 2 3 and so forth so that's the best method of identifying your rabbits now let's talk about feeding your rabbits okay so you can feed your rabbits using food that is either grown or purchased okay but in most cases you want if you are able you want to be able to grow your own food so that you save on cost you need to know that rabbits have a unique digestive system that allows them to absorb important nutrients from materials that other animals may find indigestible okay so things like grass and so forth okay so before getting to that let's discuss about the nutrients that the rabbits need so rabbits need carbohydrates to give them energy they also need fats which can also be broken down to give them energy though they need fats in in small amounts then they need proteins which are used to repair the body and also to to enable them to develop their body then they need minerals for different body functions most importantly they need sodium and chlorine which can be found in salt then they also need calcium and phosphorus okay then they need vitamins they need water so all these nutrients can be found in feeds 
that you give to your rabbits. There are different types of feeds available and they can be categorized into concentrate feeds, roughage and succulent feeds. A concentrate feed is a feed that contains all these nutrients in the right amount, okay? So it's normally made using grains, okay? So for example, you, you are using maize grain which contains carbohydrates, sunflower meal which contains protein, and a vitamin premix which contains vitamins and, and minerals, then you are combining it to form Concentrate feed which contains all the minerals. Then you can also feed your rabbits with the roughages such as their wheat that your rabbits can consume. Or you can feed them with things like hay and straw. Roughages are normally high in fiber but contains low amount of, of minerals. Okay. Then we have succulent feeds such as green grass and vegetables okay so that you feed to to your rabbits so you need to develop a feeding program that allows you to to feed your rabbits with both succulent feeds roughage feeds and and the concentrate feeds though the concentrate feeds should be in small amounts so that you save on costs now let's talk about the health of your rabbits where we are mostly going to focus on parasites and diseases that affect your rabbits. So examples of parasites that affect your rabbits include ear mites, ear mites. Okay, symptoms will include brownish scabs on the ear canal. Okay, then you'll notice that the rabbit is scratching the ears and shaking the head. This can be treated using an insecticide which will need to be applied repeatedly. Then we have fur mites which also attack your rabbits. Okay. Symptoms include reddened scaly skin, intense itching and some loss of hair. This can also be treated using an insecticide which will need to be applied repeatedly. Then we have lice which also affects your skin, okay? So it can also be treated using an insecticide and symptoms include flaky skin, okay? Then we have intestinal worms, okay? Which will lead to low, slow growth rate. This can be treated using a dewormer. So find a dewormer that is suitable for rabbits and use it. Then we have coccidiosis, whose symptoms include you will notice that there is blood in the in the feces of your rabbits and things like that. So you can treat it using a cosidia. Okay, so we have medicine that you can give to treat the rabbits. Then we, there are parasites that are also known as wobbles. Symptoms include swelling or a lump around the shoulder. So a wobble is a parasite which mu must be removed with the help of, of a veterinary, of a vet, okay? So it's similar to a condition in human beings. I'll remember the, I, I, I can't remember the name, but there is normally swelling around the body and there is a parasite inside which needs to be removed as, as well. So wobbles is the same thing. Then examples of diseases and, and ailments that affect your rabbits include sawhawks. Symptoms include loss of hair on the bottom of the feet, dry red feet pads, but the rabbit may also be reluctant to, to walk. Okay, so this is caused normally as a result of poor cleanliness. So you can treat it first and foremost by providing a solid and clean surface for them, rabbits to rest on. Then you'll use the antibiotics to treat the feet. Then we also have ringworms whose symptoms include circular patches on the rabbit's face and feet. It can be treated using a fun fungical cream. Okay. Then we have a disease known as pneumonia, 
which you'll notice there is quick labored breathing which normally indicates that there is accumulation of of some moisture in their lungs okay so you can treat it using antibiotics as well then there is some other conditions known as malocclusion enteresis weeping eyes and so forth so what whenever you notice that your rabbits are not are not well you need to get in touch with a vet, a vet who will then enable you to identify which type of disease it is then you can be able to treat it okay so now let's talk about biosecurity these are measures that you put in place to prevent your rabbits from getting diseases okay so biosecurity measures include isolation of sick rabbits so that they don't infect the others proper handling of the rabbits traffic control to avoid scenarios where a visitor is coming in who is not very who is not well sanitated and he eventually transmits disease causing microorganisms to your rabbits okay then another biosecurity measure as i mentioned before is proper hygiene now let's talk about breeding of your rabbits okay first and foremost as you keep your rabbits select the largest ones and those that are more active to use for for breeding okay there are various types of breeding programs available you can use out the first one is known as out crossing where you are mating rabbits of the same breed but those that are unrelated then there is cross breeding where you are mating unrelated rabbits from different breeds then there is another one known as line breeding okay where you are mating rabbits that are descended from the same animals but not not closely related okay then there is in breeding where you are mating closely related animals such as brothers and sisters which in most cases is not recommended okay so under breeding you need to keep in mind the following okay so first you need to know that unlike many other mammals rabbits do not have a regular heat cycles they have what is known as reflex ovulators and they release eggs 9 to 13 hours after they are mated okay then during mating period decreased light will result in a reduced concep conception rates in rabbits so rabbits need a lot of light around 14 to 16 hours of light every day okay then another thing you need to know is that during when it's time to breed take the door the female one to the back cage okay Mm -hmm. then once you take you, you take the female rabbit the female one to the male you should allow them to interact for for around 24 hours or so okay the gestation period in rabbits is around 31 days okay though it may vary by two days okay so once your rabbit is about to give birth ensure that you provide a nest box which will then allow which and you also provide bedding material that the door will use to build the nest box to be ready to receive the young rabbits okay at the end of the gestation period your door will give birth okay it can give birth for around 10 minutes or so the litter size may vary but in most cases it ranges from about 10 to 14 if you're feeding them properly okay 
so once the the kids are born the young rabbits are born okay the 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 mother will give put them in the next box the ne nest box and cover them with with fur okay then after a day or so you need to check if the the young rabbits have been fed okay you look at the belly to know if they have been fed but in most cases you need to help the young rabbits to to feed by carrying them and into in and placing them near the 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 mother okay near the mammary glands of the mother because most of the, all the young rabbits are are born with their eyes closed okay then you will need to win okay to win the young rabbits before they are they are three months old and then you can you you can then give the mother a short period before before you you introduce you into you, you you make it you introduce it to the back again then under the business side of rabbit keep the keeping you will need to know that rabbits can be sold for meat you can sell them for fiber for the, their fiber you can sell them as live rabbits for farmers who intend to keep them or you can sell them you can sell the manure so you should look for prospective markets preferably before the, the rabbit before you start the venture so that's all for rabbit farming see you in the next